surely God is in this place. Help me notice. My name is Sharon Valentine, and I am a minister at Grace United Church in Peterborough. Greetings and welcome today. Wherever you are, whoever you are, you are needed, valued, and belong. There is room for all. Thanks for choosing to join us today online. It is the fourth Sunday after Epiphany, and this is Worship for January 31st, 2021. We will be celebrating the Sacrament of Communion today, so please have bread and juice or whatever food and beverage you are using for our sharing of the Eucharist today. Thank you to everyone taking part. Please connect with us this week. If you have a candle, I invite you to light it now or just hold the light of Christ in your heart. God who speaks comfort to us calls us here. God who addresses us with tenderness meets us here. God who guides us with gentleness cares for us here. Reflecting the power of God's Holy Spirit, we pray for light and love in all places, within ourselves, in reaching out to others, in all of creation. Good morning. What a beautiful day to praise the Lord. Please join me in the call to worship and opening prayer found on the screen. I'll read both parts, but please join in from home. Epiphany is a time of revelation, a time when we see things for the first time or in a new light. Open our eyes to see your light, O oh God. Epiphany is a time when we hear God's call and all that God is calling us to be. Open our ears to hear your calling, O oh God. Epiphany is a time when we recognize God's grace, abundant and overflowing. Open our hearts to receive your grace, O oh God. Epiphany is a time for worship, that we might be called by the light of Christ, led by the Holy Spirit, and filled with the grace of God. Open our lives to respond in worship of you, O God. Let us pray. Beloved God, we quiet our hearts to receive your messages of love. We gather to rest in you, to set aside our struggles, enliven us. We open ourselves to you, desiring to know you more in the joy that you know us, as you are with us now and for all time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, our first song this morning has a beautiful message in it. It reminds us that Jesus was called to love all people, and he lived that life of love, and we too are called to love all people. So please join the worship band this morning as we sing Above All. Oh, 
song this morning is a song that's going to help us prepare our hearts for communion which we'll be sharing in a little later in our service. I love this song and, and the message that it shares and the impact in my heart where it says use our lives and that's exactly what we're called to be is the hands and feet of Christ. So please join in as we sing as bread that is broken. Many hearts are hungry tonight Many trapped in darkness yearn for the light So many who are far from home and many who are lost oh lord your wounded children need the power of your cross as bread that is broken use our lives as wine that is poured out a willing sacrifice Empower us, Father, to share the love of Christ. As bread that is broken, Lord, use our lives. Help us to begin where we are. Help us love the people near to our hearts and give our faith a mission field wherever you may call you love the world through each of us until we touch them all as bread that is broken use our lives is wine that is poured out a willing sacrifice empower us father to share the love of christ as bread that is broken As wine that is poured out, a willing sacrifice. Empower us, Father, to share the love of Christ. As bread that is broken, Lord. As wine that is poured out, Lord. As bread that is broken. What do you say? What's your high and low today? That's fun to say, but a little harder to answer. I'll say it again, and then I'll explain it. 
Hey, hey, what do you say? What's your high and low today? In a few weeks, we will be reading the story of Jesus going up on a mountaintop with some of his friends. Things that we think are awesome or really wonderful, sort of the best or our favorite experiences, people sometimes describe as mountaintop experiences or highlights or high points or simply highs. Jesus also reminded his friends that they were going to have to go back down the mountain to the valleys, to the lower places. A psalm writer called David wrote about walking through the valleys. These we've come to know as the tough stuff. What worries us makes us feel saddest or most concerned. People often call these valleys the lows, valley lows, or name them just lows. Share your mountain highs and valley lows with someone and ask them to share theirs if they're comfortable to tell. Remember to say thank you. And please call me, text me, or email me with your mountain high and valley low for today or maybe for this week. Whether we are having mountain highs or valley lows or anything in between, we can always share everything with God. I want to share with you all a prayer using your hand taught by Cardinal George Virgogio. You might recognize him by his current name, Pope Francis. While he was still Archbishop in Argentina before he became the Pope, he shared this reminder with us about how we might remember what to pray about. It is a five-fingered prayer. I'm going to explain it first. The thumb is the closest finger to us, so we start praying for those who are closest to us our friends and families, they are the person's easiest to remember. The next finger is the index finger or the pointer finger. Pray for those who teach us, instruct us, heal us. Teachers, doctors, pastors, parents, they need wisdom and encouragement to show direction to others. The middle finger, usually the tallest, reminds us to pray for our leaders, those in government or others who have authority, including those who make laws or do law enforcement. The fourth finger is the ring finger. It's our weakest finger. It reminds us to pray for those who are the most vulnerable those who may be sick, injured, hungry, or even homeless. And finally, we have our smallest finger, the pinky. Some people call it the baby finger. It reminds us to pray for ourselves. After we have finished praying for the other four groups, we are able to see our own needs in a proper perspective and pray for ourselves in a better way. Let us pray. Loving God, we pray for all those close to us, members of our family, friends, people who are important to us. We pray for teachers, instructors, healthcare workers, doctors and nurses, and all helpers. We pray for parents and guardians. Grant all these people wisdom and help us listen. We pray for the leaders of our church, our community, municipalities, our provinces and territories, our nation and throughout the world. We pray for all who are sick, 
all those dealing with COVID-19, those who are sad, grieving, and those who are struggling to have the basics of enough food, clothing, and shelter. We pray for those who are injured, hurting, or feeling alone. We pray for ourselves, loving God. Help us be our best today. In Jesus' name. Well, now we have the opportunity to share in our children's song this morning. And the wonderful message is, God is so good. Please join us. lectionary for this Sunday, in Deuteronomy, Moses has been talking about how God is and is not going to communicate with God's people. We read that God will continue to share messages through prophets, spokespeople for God, and that other prophets will come after Moses even the prophesizing of the coming of Jesus. Psalm 111 is a prayer of praise to God, reminding us of God's everlasting love. Biblical scholars describe it as an acrostic psalm, providing the ABCs of God's characteristics. Scholar Rolf Jacobson describes it as reflecting God's position, functions, actions, and characteristics. This psalm is often coupled with the next psalm, Psalm 112, in which the characteristics of a follower of God or the disciples are described. Read both if you have time. In the epistle, the Apostle Paul is writing to the people of Corinth, providing what first looks like strange instructions based on eating customs of the time, lifting up for us today, not the worry of meat sacrifices, but thinking more so about how important it is to consider the needs of others and to recognize love over knowledge. Commentator Melanie Howard invites us to think about caring for others, our neighbors, in the reading of this passage, to think about all the changes in our lives, the sacrifices for others, and all that we are doing to be safe and to keep others safe in this pandemic. Knowledge can be good or bad, and it is up to us to think about how we use knowledge. In the reading from the Gospel of Mark, Jesus is in the synagogue or temple on a holy day and heals a person. The person was described as having evil spirits. People in Jesus' time did not have the medical understanding we have now, and the language may seem strange speaking about exorcisms of demons. 
This person sensed the power of Jesus' love and spoke out that he knew who Jesus was, and Jesus healed him. As you read these passages or any scripture this week, notice what word, phrase, or idea catches your attention and think about what it means for you. Today, we are reading from Psalm 111, verses 1 to 10. And George is reading from the New Revised Common Lectionary. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is his work and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of all of our hearts be open and acceptable to you, O oh God. Help us learn more about who you are, thinking outside the box and focusing on your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray. Creator God, we thank you for all you have blessed us with. The cold nights and the brilliant full moon, the stars, the snowy fields, the brooks that are still babbling despite the cold, the calming sound of water over rocks, the crunch of cold snow underfoot. Thank you for skating rinks and tobogganing hills, for the laughter of children playing in the snow. Thank you for the smell of firewood burning, Thank you for the bunnies hopping around and the squirrels scurrying everywhere, for the ruby grosbeaks, the morning doves and blue jays flitting about. Thank you for hot chocolate, cozy blankets and fuzzy socks, for good movies, books and beautiful music, for telephones, computers, for Zoom and FaceTime and mail. Despite being locked down, we have much to be thankful for, much we can do to communicate and reach out, even if we have to stay six feet apart. Forgive us, Lord, for sulking and complaining about the lockdown. Thank you for help and life. We pray for those who are not as fortunate, those who have COVID or other illnesses, those who are sick, but afraid to go to the hospital, for those who have had their surgery pushed back, for cancer patients enduring radiation and chemo, for those suffering from depression or other mental illness compounded by isolation. We pray for those who find life so unbearable and are contemplating death by suicide. Be with them. Surround them with your love and caring. Show us how to love like you do. Thank you for Bell Talk Day, for those who are trying to bring mental health issues to the forefront and those who are willing to share their stories in an attempt to help others who are struggling. We lift up to you the families and friends of those who have passed away be with them, Lord, 
Help them to grieve in these difficult times. Wrap your loving arms around them. Bring them comfort. Be with Lyle and Lillian as they adjust to retirement. May they feel our prayers and love. Lord, be with the homeless and the helpless who have no home to isolate in. Be with the workers who try to bring safety, food, and warmth to them. Be with us, Lord, and compel us to help those who are less fortunate than we are. We pray that COVID will not dampen our vision of reaching out and engaging the community. Help us find alternate methods to reach out 167 hours we aren't here. Help us not to judge others who may look or think differently than we do. Show us again how to love unconditionally, to see past the tattoos, the piercing, the skin color, the language, the beliefs. Help us to just see people, your children, as you see them. Be with our country, Lord, our province, our city, our leaders, Prime Minister Trudeau, Premier Ford, and all their advisors, for those in charge of the vaccine procurement and rollout. Be with the companies that produce the vaccine. Prod them to be more compassionate, to, more, to worry more about the health of the world and not big business. Be with our seniors, those in nursing homes, and those in their own homes. Protect them and keep them. We pray that their vaccination will curtail the deaths from COVID. Help us all to follow the rules of the lockdown and to act, get the numbers down. Keep the children, teens, teachers, and staff that have gone back to school despite lockdown safe. Be with the Canada Post staff and all essential workers who are making others' lives better, but have somehow contracted COVID. Bring them a speedy recovery. Lord, some of our lights are growing dim. We know your word is a lamp onto our feet and a light onto our path, but we neglect your word we don't see your path for us. Bring us back to your word. Guide and direct us by your holy light so that our lights will shine brightly and lead others to know you and your love. Reveal to us our path that we may follow you in all that you are calling us to be. In Jesus' name we pray and continue to say, the prayer you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
say of God, I know who you are? Psalm 111 invites us to reflect through the psalmist's writing a summary of our knowing of God's characteristics and works. Depending on the situation, this could be clear or pretty foggy. On a clear day, for example, we might notice so much scenery, context, details, God. But on a foggy day, it's harder to notice both literally and figuratively. We need the light of hope and a sense of peace. Receive these words from Psalm 111. Praise, thanks, whole heart, great, delight, honor, majesty, righteousness, endures forever, renown, wonderful, gracious, merciful, provides, ever mindful, covenant, power, heritage, nations, faithful, just, trustworthy, forever, faithfulness, uprightness, redemption, covenant, forever, holy, awesome, wisdom, good, understanding, praise, endures forever. Did you notice that I repeated some words like praise, endures, faithful, forever? Words reoccurring in this psalm. Repeating messages from God is the work of a prophet, a Greek word meaning spokesperson. Take care of the vulnerable, seek peace, love, justice, care for the earth and each other. These are messages that prophets bring. And these prophets often speak into creation, speaking for all those whose voices are being drowned out. And this also challenges us with our own responsibilities to communicate how we know and experience God, to speak up and speak out. In Psalm 111, fear of the Lord being the beginning of wisdom is often quoted. While an Old Testament image is to fear God, Jesus repeatedly speaks of love, speaking of not being afraid, a message we need to have repeated. Courage is fear that has said its prayers. Embracing God as love, wisdom comes in our moving through our fears and discovering God reflected in others, especially those who are most marginalized, those who are outsiders or do not fit in the box. In the gospel reading in Mark, Jesus was in the synagogue in Capernaum. It was the Sabbath, a holy day. People looked to the religious leaders as the voices of authority. They were the ones who knew the laws and were credited for having knowledge of God. But on this day, Jesus captured everyone's attention Jesus was speaking and acting with true authority as one who knew God. A person who today 
might be described as experiencing mental illness or instability, yelled out, confronting Jesus, I know who you are. That individual was watching, observing, and knew who Jesus was. The least likely to be included or welcomed there was the one person who got it, who could identify Jesus and Jesus' connection to God. A person who seems to have experienced more valley lows than mountain highs. They know who Jesus is. Have you ever heard it said? Yeah. We think about those on the outside, those who are marginalized. Perhaps this week you observe the Bell Let's Talk Day, a day in which people are encouraged to think about mental health, mental well being, and the way we treat others, especially about the need to break the stigmas around mental health. Perhaps this individual in the story that Jesus is telling of the first healing, the first public act, that person would have been one identified as carrying the stigma of mental health, of not being normal, of not fitting in the box or doing what was expected. But it makes you wonder. Do any of us really ever fit in the box when we're completely honest with ourselves? Have you ever heard that some students talk too much? As a teacher, I wanted students to talk. I used microphone systems daily to support people talking, to project their voices and be heard. It gave confidence to the shy ones and equitable opportunity for everyone to focus on the speaker. Energetic, curious, observant, not in the box students sometimes were bursting with their wonderings and impulsivity. Some people do not sit still well. You know, You can learn while you stand or lay on the floor or sometimes even need to walk and move about. In my classroom, you just had to ask me before you worked on the floor so I didn't trip over you. I believed in empowering us to sit in our seats when we needed to and having the flexibility to move about and be in different places and spaces when it worked for our better learning and concentrating. Often, I found that students could arrive at the beginning of a school year intimidated to try, as if their spirit for learning and believing they could had already been crushed out of them. Maybe you were one of those students or a parent or grandparent to a child that doesn't fit in the traditional classroom box. Well, my classroom was not a traditional classroom, not a in the box kind of classroom anyway. I mean, think about it. Who has a dog in the classroom? Who has a teacher that has to ask the students when she's writing on the board if she is in a clear spot on the board so she does not write over top? Who gets pretend driver's licenses the very first day of school so they can sighted guide their teacher to their gym class? You don't wanna take a guide dog to gym class with a bunch of soccer balls and a class full of students racing around, especially with one or two of those students guiding their teacher and laughing when the teacher misses the ball yet again or the sweet victory when she actually times it right and kicks the ball 
and I loved multi-ball soccer. I was famous for dumping as many balls as there were in the bag onto the floor so that we could all have maximal opportunities to play. It brought as much laughter and whimsy and fun as it did elements of soccer playing. That teacher will do daily brain gym and mindfulness practices too, gratitude journals, and at times speak out strange statements like, could I borrow some functioning eyeballs? And immediately have volunteers offering help. She will read you a whole novel and never see a word of the printed page. Simul reading from her audio in her ear. She puts braille bumps in the upper right corner of every notebook and folder. And all personal classroom library books have a braille title on the cover. When you have a teacher that teaches you to read without seeing the page or is weird about wanting you to have your best cursive script, placing her fingers on your desk, laying her palm down for you to make a practice cursive letter with your finger on the back of her hand. So she can see how your brain is understanding how to form that letter. Or you direct her finger and trace and talk her through your art creation, asking and answering her many questions so she can see and understand your artist's perspective, who kind of kept up with spelling when it fell out of vogue and cursive writing after it was no longer on the curriculum, because I felt we all needed to be able to be our best and at least be able to write our name and read cursive script. All of it somewhat outside the box qualifiably weird, right? But one of the things I also observed consistently as a teacher, humbled to learn and grow with my students every year, is those same children who others said didn't fit, or as we joked, fit and dit, were the very first students to be observant and alert me when there was stuff on the floor in the hall or there was a safety concern or any number of small things. These were usually the very first students who would get it and know me. They would volunteer to help and so willing to enter into our necessary cooperating and working together. Students got the reciprocity, the mutual respect and responsibility of what I believe what was building community of mutual learners. Because none of us ever truly are in the box. We all yearn to be true to ourselves, to be authentic, to have the vulnerability when we need help and when we need to do things in different ways. It's not right, it's not wrong, it's just who we are and being the wonderful people that God made us to be. In my classroom, we needed each other and we risked vulnerability together. And we took responsibility together Choosing to leave the classroom was one of the most difficult decisions that I have ever made. I have been so blessed. To those of you who were in my classroom, thank you. Back to our story in the scripture. Can you imagine the religious leaders in the church that Sabbath day? angry about the person who interrupted the ways of the service, that Jesus had the audacity to break the mold on customs and had the nerve to challenge them. Whenever 
we are willing to engage, to get to know others, to trust and to risk, we learn stuff. Some of the fear, the weirdness is dispelled and greater cooperation and community is built. Some Christians will focus on demons and spirits, exhortations with a different understanding and emphasis. For me in this text, this one person on the margins, often one who would not have been accepted or included, saw Jesus as the true prophet of God, a spokesperson and spoke up and spoke out. I heard this amazing commentary podcast from Sermon Brainwaves from Luther Seminary this week. Carolyn Lewis and Joy J. Moore, two professors, were connecting this passage with the story of Jesus' baptism. Jesus experienced the Holy Spirit coming down like a dove. And Jesus, if you will, was possessed with the Holy Spirit. Now, in this first recorded public act of ministry, a person is possessed with a different kind of spirit, but still knows who Jesus is and has an understanding of knowing God. Jesus calls out that negative spirit, creating greater space within that person in which the Holy Spirit might dwell. That person's God knowledge now has the opportunity to be strengthened and deepened. Jesus did not teach conventionally. Jesus created welcome and an expectation for all to be loved and to have the opportunity to know God. Let's try not to judge ourselves or others. Let's embrace those outside the box, those on the margins. Let's learn and grow together. To say of God, I know who you are. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. All knowing God, with your spirit ever within us, open our hearts to receive and to respond, to grow in faith and know you. In Jesus' name, amen.
are sharing a meal that is special in the life of the church. We call it communion or Eucharist. It is a holy meal. In our church denomination, this is one of two sacraments, the other being baptism. Through this sacrament of Eucharist, we connect more closely with our loving God. It is a time when we remember how much God loves us. The United Church celebrates an open table. All are invited to share in receiving the sacrament of Holy Communion. And due to the pandemic, we are sharing virtually. And I invite you to have ready whatever food and drink you are using for our communion. If you would like, take a photo and share a picture of your communion food and drink today. Send it to me. As we come to this table, we are reminded that this is the table of Jesus Christ, a banquet prepared for everyone. Imagine all of our tables, some new, some old, some bearing the markings of their stories, some fancy, some simple, some adorned, some plain, a kitchen table, a dining room table, a TV tray, an end table, a lap, the ground, our tables as different as we are, as different as the food and drink before us, as different as the vessels that hold them, but all transformed in this sacred sacrament as we gather as one, all a part of the body of Christ. No one is excluded. Come, join us. No, you are included valued, needed, you belong. God be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift our hearts in prayer. Let us give thanks to God. It is good to give God thanks and praise. Let us pray. Infinite God, we want to know you and draw closer. Source of love, you know no boundaries. Your song of wisdom rang out before the world began. Throughout the ages, your song of liberation has impregnated us, filled us with your hope for our world where those considered last and least are the first and most. Violence is overcome by the power of your ancient love and all people work together for peace. You bring our longings to birth and send prophets to awaken us to your presence among us. You inspire us, O oh God, with songs, with messages of your word Renew our hope. God of hope, make our food the means of our rebuilding. Our drink, the medium of our transformation. Our table, the foundation of our renewal. And this community, connected virtually, the beacon of light and love epiphany. As we pray together, O oh God, we want to connect with you more deeply as we feel your mighty presence. We join ourselves to that great company of heaven and earth of all God's people everywhere in every age. Christ is our host, welcoming, greeting. This is, O oh God, the banquet, his love prepared. Weary and rested, 
worn and happy, healthy and dying, alone and together. Jesus welcomes us here. We remember Jesus' life of love, his friendship, his teaching, his dying and his rising to life again. We come as we are, hope-filled seekers of peace. We give thanks that we are enough. Each of us called to this table of welcome, acceptance, love, and inclusion. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. It was a mealtime they would never forget. They gathered in the intimacy of an upper room by lamplight, the air heavy with sadness and confusion at all the disquieting occurrences within them and around them. The meal followed the usual format that they ate together as they had for three years now, until, until right in the middle. Jesus at the center of it all stopped conversation and said words which have been reported in the church from that day to this. This bread that we break together is my body. He spoke that he gave it for them and that it was given freely. This cup that we share together, he shared was his life's blood given to them, given freely so that all might know it, life in all its fullness, just as Jesus did. He told them that he would not eat and drink again until he did so in the coming fullness of God's kingdom. They were mystified, but they followed his lead. They ate the bread and drank from the cup. We come to eat and to drink and to remember. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them for all to drink, saying, this is the new covenant in my blood shed for you shed for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Praise be with you now, tomorrow and forever. Through Christ, in Christ, and with Christ. Gracious God, breath of peace, source of love, we pray for your spirit, make us while many one, make us though broken whole, make us despite death alive, come Holy Spirit, come. Bless these simple gifts of food and drink, may your spirit be enlivened in us, Fill us with new hope. Amen. Take, eat the bread of life. Take, drink the cup of blessing. Let us pray together. 
We thank you, God, for filling us with hope. Thank you that as we are fed, we are nourished. Thank you that as we drink, our thirst is quenched. Thank you that as we are loved, forgiven, and freed, our hearts are opened to love more. Amen. We have a few announcements this morning, as you'll find on the slides. Our annual report is being put together, and if you are submitting a ministry report, we ask that you get it into the office no later than February 5th. Our annual meeting is scheduled for February 28th, and there will be more details being shared in the coming weeks with regard to the annual meeting. Please join us on February 14th as we have a special celebration celebrating Baden-Powell Sunday. And we celebrate in this service our amazing scouting program that we have here at Grace. The One Roof Diner continues to be in need of our help and Donna Rodenheiser is doing a wonderful job leading this ministry at this time. And we know that they are looking for more warm gloves and mitts as you know, the temperature outside is dropping, and that just helps us help them. And they are also in need of shampoo. And we continue with our Zoom opportunities to gather with, for fellowship. Thursdays for our craft and chat, and Sundays following the service for our time of fellowship at 11.30. Please join us. May the blessing of God give us strength for the journey. May the spirit of wisdom give us vision for the road. May the love of Christ make us caring companions. As together we go forth with courage and love. Go now in peace. Stay confident in God's love. Peace and healing power. Feel nourished. Feel renewed. Feel hope. We know who God is. God who loves, includes, honors, accepts, forgives us, and calls us beloved children. God is here within you and me, surrounding us and ever reminding us we are not alone. Share hope that God's light and love may be experienced everywhere. Go make a difference. We continue to pray as we stay. Stay home. Stay safe. Stay well. Stay filled with the spirit of hope, kindness, joy, and infinite possibility. God bless you and amen. <laughs>